Oh, I'm Eric Coca Flow Plus here again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Is it still morning? Fucking almost there. I fucking slept in today wearing the infamous Come to Many Country t shirt. This is a one off, there, my lakes. I don't know, I might make more, but for now it's a one off. You see, it's fucking already worn out, man. Fucking cheap material. I'm not gonna call out these cuts who fucking printed this one. Don't worry about the caps, the caps are fucking sick. This fucking t shirt there, but it's got that worn out look there already. Nice. Oh, the burp's not coming. If you happen to see some Malaga walking around here with fucking with a mask on and he's wearing this t shirt, for sure it's me. This is no other ones out there yet. Yo, so manga me to prasino. He's gonna walk past me now, I don't know if you'll see him. Fucking he's rocking, they're both rocking the green. Sick! Rocking the beach now, I'm rocking the beach lately, rocking the beach. I don't get the fuck out of here, getting fucking out, fucking out of the northern suburbs every day and going down Bayside. It's gonna be, uh, I've got some news on that soon. Um, good news, man. Good news, good news, good news. Regarding uh, proximity, fucking location and whatnot. It's good to see things uh, opening up slowly, man. It's good to see things opening up slowly. You're fucking, I've missed, like you all, I've missed my family, my friends, fucking terribly. Damn. I'm at that point now. As a bit of an introverted, extroverted introvert that I am, the lockdown generally wasn't too bad for me. I don't mind fucking getting into going into my cave, especially especially over uh, uh, winter, like a big arcuda, because I'm a fucking bear. You know who else is a bear? Evan Robotis, if you're watching this, fucking love you, I haven't seen you in years. Evan Robotis, I went to school, went to uh, high school with him, played fucking, um, played with him at Brunswick City as well. He was sitting right next to John Very Carcass that, that fateful day on that first day at uh, Princess Hill, year seven, 1987. So I knew I had a friend for life. I haven't seen him in a few years, but Evan. Here's to ya. His nickname was the bear. Does he look like a bear? He's fucking big and solid. Over the years, he, you know, lost a bit of weight, but to me, you always be the fucking the bear. Yes, Evan. Love you, Evan. So coming out of this fucking, I was happy to go in to the cave and stay in there. It's me and Peggy and a certain someone and fucking hang out and watch movies and whatnot. And come out here and get my coffee every so often. Connect with you people. That was my outlet to the outside world. It still is. Connect with you, share with you, make you laugh because I'm a funny cunt. I hit the T there because I wanted to emphasize that. But now I'm fucking sick of it too, Dan. Uh, let's get out. Let's rock and all roll. We need each other. It's a porcupine analogy, huh? Human beings are like porcupines. They need to huddle to get close together. They need to huddle, they need to huddle get close together so they can keep each other warm. But if they get too close, they prick each other. That's us. But hopefully, if I can, with all the... gains we make in technology and everything else, science, medicine, all these things are good. The hardest thing for us to do is just to learn to be kind to each other. That's the hardest thing, I think. Certain someone loves the power of uh, music and sound and they're, they're into you know, 
know, sound therapy and stuff. I believe in that too. You know, like uh, Bob Marley said in his song, one good thing about music, when it hits, you feel no pain. It's fucking spot on. We were talking about it yesterday, just about various different things about sound, healing and frequencies and whatnot. And as we were talking about it, we were sitting in the car opposite the beach. And it hit me, that was like, sound therapy, you know? it's right here. It was a choppy day yesterday as well, so the waves were fucking coming in sort of thick and fast, you know. It's all for free in front of us. Don't have to do anything, just go there, stop, put everything away, phones my like yes and just listen. It's all for free. And the thing about these waves, the way they were coming in, was that upon initial listening, it sounds repetitive like it's a loop. sounds like it's looping but if you listen closer if you actually just get rid of all your distractions and you listen and you just sit there and listen a little bit closer you realize that every single time they come in it's just a little bit different there's something else going in there's another wave over here crashing a little bit lightly there's another noise over here a bird might go past there's something every single time it's just a little different it's organic and that's what keeps it it's fucking magical now and there's a uh, um, uh, musician and um, music uh, producer and engineer on, on YouTube called Rick Beato. A few of you might be aware of his channel, B E A T O. And sometimes he breaks down, he, he went through this one, he did this one video where he broke down the, um, the drum beat, John Bonham's drum beat from uh, When the Levy Breaks, Led Zeppelin. And he put it into fucking Pro Tools or whatever. And Pro Tools has this effect, I forget the name of it, quantifying, I think it is, quantizing or something like that, where they're able to just get every beat bang on the dot like that, you know, just have everything perfect. And he took John Bonham's drum beat from where the levee breaks and quantized it, whatever the fuck it's called, and played it back. And he goes, now listen to it. He goes, first listen to it as it, you know, as it is just organically, just the way it is on the track. It's got a bit of a funk and a bit of a feel, you know. Then he takes it, quantizes it, play, presses play again, and you listen to it and he goes, it's lost all its fucking feel because it's too perfect. It's too perfect, man. Things can't be too perfect. And sometimes people try and work out scientifically or mathematically the the equations of how things work or whatever and they try and replicate that that's this is the age that we're at now where there's an app for 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 everything because people have gotten so clever with technology that they're able to what they think replicate a certain type of effect certain type of look and so on and so forth and they build it into some sort of system and they go here you go yeah just click on this and it does this effect for you it does that or it replicates this kind of thing and then we watch them back and instinctively instinctively deep down we kind of have something not right about this something not right about this film you know i know fucking it's all cgi i know that it's all cgi so when I'm watching it, it's just something about it, it's just not. What do you put that down to there? Our fucking internal GPS is infinitely smarter and wiser and way ahead of our intellect. Way ahead. 
But we try and play God, you know, and try and fucking replicate things to just get things perfect. So they go, there we go. We have mastered film. We have mastered music. We have mastered nature. We've worked out the, the equation of X plus Y equals dicks. And therefore, we're, out, we're, we're able to replicate it now. We have mastered nature. We have mastered the arts. We have mastered the medium of film, for example. Never. You can make a film. There's this... Um, clip on, on, on YouTube that I found there was uh, someone who put together a side by side uh, clip example of uh, scenes from The Irishman and then the same scenes but on, underneath the first one they said The Irishman as it, you know, as it appears on Netflix and then the same scene on the right hand side of the screen underneath deep fake so what they did was they used deep fake technology to de-age um, De Niro in The Irishman and they compared that to the way they did it in the actual film and all the millions of dollars they used and the way they the deep fake version looks fucking Unbelievable now. That's disturbing. I think we're at a point where we're looking to master the arts. We're looking to get it right. As opposed to looking to express ourselves authentically the two different things because if you express yourself authentically by definition you've got it right somehow whatever right is because you're putting your own two cents worth you're throwing into this massive fucking crucible of uh, ideas and creativity and art that has been going on for, for, for thousands of, and thousands of years. You're throwing in your two cents. You're throwing in your little ingredient to this fucking big melting pot. You go, oh, I want a bit of Coca-Flopolis in there. This is what I taste like. You throw that in there. I clicked on a film yesterday on Netflix. It was called White Boy Rick. It was about a a white, uh, like a massive sort of a drug dealer, I think in some sort of uh, a white guy, big drug dealer in some sort of hick town, I think in Texas or somewhere like that, he be became famous or infamous, you know, his name is White Boy Rick, massive drug dealer. So I clicked on that, I kind of looked a bit greedy and interesting or whatever, five minutes in, <clears throat> Well, 10 minutes in, I switched it off. You know why? As soon as it, it, it started, it looked not too bad. Matthew McConaughey's in there, you know. All right, all right, all right. But there was a sequence after this kind of introductory scene. There was a sequence there where I think they were driving in a car and there was some sort of cool fucking old song from, from maybe the 60s, like some sort of soul track or something like that. And I watched that again. I'm a lack of Scorsese's done this today. It's the, the same. Using cool fucking old music and stuff to drive the, the story and the narrative. But I can't add it. He's done it. I switched it off. I'm not going to see anything new now. I know I'm not going to see anything new. I'm not going to see anything fresh. Now, I wasn't watching it to look for mistakes or to look for fucking yeah to look for fuck ups or anything like that I wanted to enjoy a fucking film man. but I watched it and my first thing is oh, I've seen this before it's been done before I 
So I think we're at a point now where we're getting too clever for the arts. We're getting too clever for these mediums. And it's the, the clever artists who are being, in my opinion, wrongfully fucking uh, rewarded. Something new to my neck, something new to, something new, fresh. Never gonna be totally original, but it's gonna be fucking fresh, you know. Led Zeppelin did it. Now there's fucking videos out there that talk about Led Zeppelin's plagiarism, how many people they ripped off and whatnot, and there's some truth to that as well. And there are um, instances where they had to settle with, uh, you know, the, the the estate. I think of Willie Dixon and maybe a few others as well. Rightfully so. They also did something fresh with uh, certain songs and bits and pieces that they heard from other bands that they were playing with and, and whatnot. And like Robert Plant says, it's just one big family of beggars and thieves. All good art. Who's a Picasso said? Uh, like a you know uh, a mediocre artist copies or whatever but good artist steals there's truth to that but it comes out through you if it comes out through you it's something new to. there's a lot of people fucking sitting in their cars talking going on rants there's a lot of people making comedy on YouTube and everywhere everywhere else there's a lot of people doing wog humor nice good luck to you where, whoever's got their fucking niche If you got your niche, you got your thing Keep going eh? Cocoflopolis has got Fucking many country When you step into these videos You're stepping into many country That's all I can give you Nice So listen to your instincts, listen to your fucking common sense now. If you're watching a film or a fucking TV show and you feel deep down, you feel a little bit, uh, so you got it, my lecker. You feel a little, um, like you know what's gonna happen or you feel a little like patronized or you feel like uh, the, the thing's talking down to you a little. Trust your fucking instincts, you know? Call it out, you my like, Go, you know, these fucking filmmakers think I'm a malaka. I'm not watching this. I know what's gonna happen next. So, so it's mainly like, because, because the American market is so fucking, has such a monopoly still on film and, uh, and, and television. They've had a, a, a history. Now, I don't speak about like all the actors, all the brilliant actors that have fucking worked or whatever. This is some amazing work that's come out of America. Get me wrong, they're fucking hell. You can't, you can't knock it. You kidding me? So much brilliant work. There is also a deep down. Um, belief, I guess, that their audiences are fucking stupid and or lazy. And so, so much stuff, so, so much fucking narrative gets, uh, gets explained one way or another. And they have those fucking massive, uh, exposition scenes where you get the cop who sits down or whatever and they explain it all. I go, all right, here, they're explaining it to me now because they think I'm fucking stupid. Keep a lookout for those scenes in films and TV whenever, next time you watch something. If you're watching something that's uh, got a sort of complex uh, narrative or something, have a look for those scenes. Well, yeah, so, uh, so what do you think, officer? Well, I think that this man has got a complex psychological issues here and uh, it's not actually... His frontal lobe that is causing him to commit these crimes. 
So it's like uh, in Psycho, <clears throat> where they forced the... I'm not sure if they forced him, but I don't know what happened, but um, with the Alfred Hitchcock, where I think he had, it to, had, it, had to add that scene with the cop at the end, where the cop just walks around explaining what the fucking film was about. That's what he's doing. When you hear, when you see and hear people in film and in TV explain what's going on to someone else, so what do you think it's about, Johnson? Well, you know, I think that this guy's got, they're not, it's, they're saying it for you. They're saying it for you because they, they think you're not going to get it. Now, if someone has to put that in a film to explain to you what the fuck is going on, then what the fuck is the rest of the film about today? Why am I watching the rest of the film? Just tell me what it's about and I'll go home. Or if I'm already home, I'll go take a shit. Or if I'm on the toilet, then I'm gonna make a sandwich. I don't know. <clears throat> Good writing is not necessarily complex plot. I know there's a lot of writers out there who think that good writing is making a fucking plot as complex as you like and then fucking tying up every single loose end by the end of it. It's maybe one form of it. <clears throat> it's not necessarily just, good writing is not necessarily just that. Good writing is fucking telling a story to me, like a simplicity. It's, it's more to it. There's other types as well. You know, stream of consciousness and <clears throat> po poetic writing that takes you into a poetic world and everything. I was listening to George Jones uh, this morning. His famous song, country music. If you want to know about fucking sim simple, beautiful storytelling with lyrics, it paints, paints a picture. So if, a, if you're listening to something... If you're reading something and it paints the picture in your head, the film is in your head there. You're seeing it already. You're not seeing it on a screen. You're seeing it in your head, but you're seeing the pictures. You're taken into the world. It's happening. You're having that experience. So George Jones' famous song is, He Stopped Loving Her Today. Go have a listen to that song. If you can be fucked, if you're interested. Go have a listen to that song and listen to the lyrics and how beautifully and simply he paints a picture of someone who went through a heartbreak and who never got over it. I watch people react when I'm fucking YouTube. George Jones, he stopped loving her today. In country music and the the blues and the rebetica, simple songs that tell stories about love, heartbreak, loss, drug, alcohol, abuse, fucking poverty, you know the story. But if they can paint the picture for you in your head as you're listening and they take you into the world, your head is in the world already. Your, your imagination is doing the work for you. And in my luck, you know what? It's all for free. You don't need a massive fucking... Hollywood budget or whatever. Millions and millions of dollars. I need some simple words. Just some simple words. And this does the work for you. I'm on fucking fire today for a Sunday. Forget about it. All right, just uh, some business, some fucking housekeeping, whatever my like. Yes, one or two people have emailed regarding the cap, the tsar cap. If I could see cap, huh? I'm going to wait for a few more orders to come in because this fucking cunts charge heaps at a fucking delivery or whatever. I want to do a massive fucking load. Not like that, man. And if you want specify like which fucking if you want to if you if you follow some sort of fucking greek club or whatever or some other club two tones are there so if you're balkana if you want to look white with the the black 
or if you're thrillers and you want a red and white or whatever, you know, so on and so forth. Specify. Nice. That's it then. What do you want?